in Descartes' view, the scientific revolution shows that the reigning intellectual and scientific paradigm of his time and for the previous 18, 1900 years was fundamentally flawed and needed to be discarded, right? <clears throat> This poses, however, a certain problem for Descartes. And the problem is, or the worry, put it this way, that Descartes has is the following. What is to guarantee that the new science won't eventually suffer the same fate? And it's not just that he's uh, partial to the new science and doesn't want to suffer the It's that he doesn't want intellectual energy to be in vain. His view of the scientific revolution and of the preceding 1900 years or so was that uh, what we found out in the scientific revolution is that the preceding 1900 years of scientific investigation were in vain. It was wasted time, wasted mental energy. And so Descartes wants to make sure that we don't waste our time anymore, that we don't waste our scientific investigations, our energies, our, our whatever, that we don't waste this anymore, that it's not in vain. That's the problem that the scientific revolution poses to someone like Descartes, who is interested in science and who is partial to the new science, right? <clears throat> He wants to make sure that what Kepler and Galileo and everybody else who's interested in science during his time. He wants to make sure that what they are doing is not in vain in the same way that what Aquinas and Avicenna and the Neoplatonists and Aristotle in the same way that what they were doing was in vain. He wants to make sure that we avoid that fate. And so he announces his project in the meditations. He says something like this. I realized that if I wanted to establish anything in the sciences that was stable and likely to last, I needed just once in my life to demolish everything completely and start again from the foundations. And so what we see here is the reason why Descartes shifts from writing scientific and mathematical treatises to writing philosophical ones because he realizes that his scientific theories, that the new science needs a new foundation. And that if we want our scientific investigations to be stable and likely to last, well, they need to be founded on sure, certain foundations, foundations that are stable and likely to last. And so what he's going to do in the meditations and in general, what he's doing with his philosophical work is trying to figure out what those foundations are. He's trying to give new foundations for human knowledge. Now, Descartes here is using a, a kind of architectural metaphor, right? He's talking about foundations and demolishing things and building something up that's likely to last and so on, right? And I think this metaphor is very helpful for understanding his idea. So both kind of what he sees as flawed about the old paradigm, and then what he proposes to do in light of those flaws. So let's consider uh, this architectural metaphor in more detail, right? So let's say we have a structure there. Yeah, uh, 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 some sort of structure, a house made out of bricks. Descartes' idea, the way he's operating here, is he's treating our belief system, the knowledge that we have, or the beliefs that we have, as analogous to just such a structure. And each of the beliefs that we have, say, individually or as human beings, what we take the truth about the world to be, can be represented by a brick. And so in the old paradigm, the Aristotelian paradigm, yeah, One of the bricks that Descartes himself had believed and that human beings more generally believed was that the sun went around the earth. And so that refers, say, to that particular brick right there. Now, here's where this metaphor becomes handy, because what Descartes would say is that, look, that belief, that's not a foundational belief. That belief was kind of explained by this doctrine of natural place. 
that doctrine of natural place. That was also something I used to believe, Descartes would say, and that's something that was part of the reigning intellectual paradigm prior to the scientific revolution, right? And so that was a belief. And look, that the, the belief that the sun goes around the earth was built upon or followed from, supported by, explained by the doctrine of natural place. And so the doctrine of natural place is below it, is supporting it in this structure. But the doctrine of natural place we saw was itself supported by this teleological view of the world. And this teleological view of the world, that was something like a foundational belief to this whole intellectual enterprise, this whole Aristotelian plate platonic way of viewing the world and the universe, right? Now, what we have found, right? And so you get how this uh, building metaphor, this support metaphor is working. It works in, you know, right? Uh, the bricks in a house support each other. Well, same too with our beliefs. Certain of our beliefs support other of our beliefs. And the ones that are kind of most basic, they support all the other ones. So this teleological view of the world was a kind of foundational belief that supported everything that came up above it. That's how Descartes viewing the, the kind of structure of human knowledge. Now, what we know in light of the scientific revolution, of course, is that all three of those beliefs are false. Right. And so if we're trying to think of uh, human knowledge and what we know as a kind of structure or edifice, what we're going to have to do in light of that new knowledge that those things are all false, Descartes would say, you got to eliminate them, eliminate them from your structure of beliefs. And it's not just those three that you might need to eliminate, but really anything that crucially relies on the doctrine of natural place or on this teleological view of the world, those would need to be removed too. Those bricks would need to be taken out. And so it ends up this structure of knowledge that we have, it ends up looking really unsecure, insecure, right? There are holes all over it. The thing could topple down. Can you build any more on top of it? It's not sure the whole thing might collapse. And so Descartes, in the quote that we just saw from him, says what we need to do is not just patch this house up. We need to raise it to the ground. We need to start over. And so Descartes' view is that we need to bulldoze down. We need to demolish the structure of human knowledge. We're, we're not going to build any more on it, and we need to start over. We're going to start again from the foundations. We're going to lay a new set of foundational beliefs. Okay. But why think that your new set of foundational beliefs is going to be any better than the Aristotelian set? Why might not your new structure of human knowledge suffer the same fate? Well, here's where Descartes' project becomes somewhat distinctive. Descartes says, we need to make sure that these foundational beliefs are certain, that they are indubitable, that they couldn't possibly be false. The old system of beliefs, the Aristotelian system, <clears throat> started with certain beliefs that seemed true, but turned out to be false. That teleological view of the world, it seemed like maybe it's true, but it's actually false. It wasn't certain. It wasn't indubitable. It could have been false, and it turned out that it was false. And so Descartes' foundations, the foundations that he's going to lay for science, are not going to be like that. They are going to be indubitable. The only thing that can serve as a foundation for human knowledge, according to Descartes, are going to be indubitable, undoubtable beliefs, beliefs that couldn't possibly be false, beliefs that are certain. And if we lay down such beliefs for the new science, well, then whatever we build on them will be stable and likely to last. We won't find ourselves in the same position that the Aristotelian view of the world found itself, where certain foundational beliefs turned out to be false. And so we see Descartes saying something like this just a little bit further on in this first meditation. What he says is the following. My reason tells me that as well as withholding assent from propositions that are obviously false. And so what does that mean? 
if something is obviously false, don't believe it, right? That's rational. That's what your reason tells you to do. My reason tells me don't believe obviously false things. Well, yeah, okay, clearly. I should also withhold it from ones that are not completely certain and indubitable. And so what Descartes is going to do is he's going to go through his beliefs and he is going to withhold assent from any of his beliefs that aren't completely certain and indubitable. Now, Descartes thinks that almost everything that we believe is doubtable, could be doubted, could be false. And we're going to see this, right? You are looking at a screen right now. That could be false, Descartes is going to say. Because why? Well, you could be dreaming or whatever, right? We'll see exactly what he says in a little bit. Descartes' project is going to be to generate reasons for doubt or the, the beginning of his project. What he's going to do at the beginning is he's going to generate reasons for doubt. And what these do is that they are going to show us every belief that is doubtable. And if something is doubtable, that doesn't mean it's false, but it does mean that it can't serve as the foundation for the new science, for human knowledge. And so his, the, the general project that he's undertaking in uh, Meditations 1 and 2, he's going to call into doubt everything that could possibly be doubted. And then whatever is left can serve as the foundations for the new science. That's what he's going to attempt to do. He's going to eliminate every, every belief that could possibly be doubted is going to be eliminated from contention. And we're going to see how he does that next. But then whatever is left, whatever, the, whatever we can't possibly doubt, well, those beliefs are certain. Those beliefs can function as the foundation for the new science, because if we treat those beliefs or if we use those beliefs as these foundations, whatever we build on them will not crumble, will be stable and likely to last. <laughs>